So let's talk about where to focus. You know, uh, a lot of times at my workshops, that's that's a, a pretty common question is where should I focus? And I give a pretty simple answer and uh, it happens with most questions. And the answer is it depends. And it depends on what you want to have in focus and sometimes what you don't want to have in focus. And so that all comes down to depth of field. And so depth of field, let's define it first of all. Depth of field is the amount of your scene that is acceptably in focus, okay? So there are times when you wanna have everything in the scene be in focus, like in this shot with the wheat field in the foreground to the mountains in the background, and that's full depth of field. And uh, like I say, sometimes you want that, but sometimes you wanna make your subject stand out and be the only thing in focus. And that's called selective focus. So there are four things that control depth of field and they equally control it. And they're e of equal importance, although some override the others depending on, on what you're shooting. So the size of your sensor makes a difference in depth of field. So the smaller the sensor, the more depth of field you have. So a crop sensor has more depth of field than a full frame sensor. And the ultimate extreme is your iPhone, which has a very, very small sensor and it has lots of depth of field. One of the reasons why it doesn't have focus because it's, everything's in focus, right? But we can't control sensor size unless we carry multiple cameras, which you know doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So that's not one that we can control when we're out shooting. There are three things that we can control when we're shooting. Uh, and aperture is one of them. And that's the thing that we think about uh, an awful lot. Most people think this is the only thing that controls depth of field, but it's not. So the smaller the opening, the more depth of field. So, uh, and that means the bigger the number, the more depth of field. So F16 has more depth of field than F4, right? So photo on the left is shot at F16, the photo on the right, F2.8. And it is a creative decision, what we want to have, what we want to show in the photo. So on it the left- be the other way around. The one on the left is F16, the one on the right is two, uh, I'm sorry, one on the left. <laughs> Thank you, I'm not looking at my pictures. The one on the left is F2.8, the one on the right is F16. F2.8 on the left, not much depth of field. F16 on the right, lots of depth of field. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's a creative decision. So, it, but it, again, it's one, one factor. So when I'm out making pictures, you know, one of the first things I'm thinking about is how much depth of field do I want to have? Do I want a lot or a little? And so that helps me decide what aperture I'm using. And that is, you know, pretty much what it comes down to. So another thing that controls depth of field is the lens focal length. So a wide angle lens, which is a lens that is less than 50 millimeters has more depth of field than a telephoto. A telephoto lens is more than 50 millimeters. So this is a field of bluebells shot with a 20 millimeter lens. And the 20 millimeter gives me a lot of depth of field. Uh, this is shot at, at uh, F8. So there's quite a bit of depth of field there and, but it is accentuated by the wide angle lens. Switch to a 200 millimeter lens and still shooting at F8. And suddenly I don't have much depth of field, even though I'm using an aperture that would give me a, a good amount if I was using a wide angle. So again, it's a creative decision. You know, which photo is better? Well, it depends on what you're trying to say. It's a creative decision. And then the fourth thing that uh, controls depth of field is the distance to the subject, how far away you focus the lens, which is also known as the focus point. And that makes a huge difference. So the farther away your focus point, the more depth of field. So we're gonna dig into this real deep later, but you can see how your choice of focal point can have a, dra uh, have a dramatic difference in your image, right? So there is this thing called hyperfocal distance. And that's the distance beyond which anything is an acceptable focus. So if you focus, say, 10 feet away, 
and that's your hypo, hyperfocal distance length. Everything from 10 feet on will be in, in focus and, and actually uh, about half that distance in front. But uh, this is uh, a chart from depth of field or dofmaster.com, dofmaster.com. Um, there are several apps that do this. Um, DOF Master is uh, uh, a, a fairly old website and they need to update it. Some of the graphics aren't working now. Uh, as I was putting this presentation together, I discovered that. Um, but uh, there's other websites that, that uh, do the same thing. And there are definitely uh, several apps for your phone, including Photo Pills, which is the one that I use the most. Um, so what you do here is you put in your camera model in, in the upper left corner, you punch, tell it what camera you're using, you tell it the lens focal length, you tell it your desired f-stop, and then your subject distance. And it calculates your depth of field. So on the right, you can see that at subject distance 10 feet, your depth of field goes from 6.13 feet to 27 feet. And that means that anything from 6.13 feet to 20.9 or 27 feet is acceptably in focus, right? So your hyperfocal length or your hyper hyperfocal distance in that situation is 15.8 feet. So if you focused at 15.8 feet, you would see a uh, full depth of field to infinity, but you'd only have um, but you're, you would only have your close focus at 7.9 feet. So basically, if you focused at, at your hyperfocal length of hyperfocal distance of 15.8 feet, everything from 7.9 feet to infinity would be in focus, all right? Now, these next couple of slides are gonna be a little technical, but don't let that scare you. I'm gonna show you later how to simplify this because I can assure you, Sorry, but I believe you accidentally Can't hear you. Yourself. You're muted. You're muted. Lauren, you're muted. Okay, sorry about that. I don't know how I got muted, but I'm back, right? Okay. Um, so let me let me back up a second so I don't know where I lost my, my audio. Um, so when we're focused at 10 point or at 10 feet, uh, using a focal length of 24 millimeters at F4, uh, our hyperfocal distance is 15.8 feet, right? So that means that, uh, everything from 7.9 feet to infinity will be in focus, but our close focus depth of field has changed to six point or changed from 6.13 feet to 7.9 feet. So uh, I'm not sure if you if lost the sound on this or not, but don't let this get too complex for you. Uh, I'm going to show you how to I'm going to show you how to uh, balance it out without using charts. Okay. So now, if we change our subject distance to five feet, look what happens to our depth of field. Our total depth of field drops to 3.46 feet from 20.9 feet before when we were focused 10 feet away. So that's why it is so important to know where to focus because it makes a massive change when we just change where we're focusing the camera, right? Um, I lost my whereabouts here. Okay, now if we focus 10 feet away, our near limit is, and we, wait, I might've skipped one here. Let me see. Yeah, I'm sorry, skipped one. So look what happens now if we change our aperture from F16 to F4, we gain back some of that depth of field. So we are now in focus from 2.22 feet to infinity, right? But what look, look what happens when we focus at the hyperfocal length distance, uh, which is 4.2, zero two feet. So four feet, if we focused at, we'd have full depth of field from two feet to infinity. 
pretty amazing, right? Just by making those little changes. And now when we change our subject distance to 10 feet, our near limit is 2.8 feet. But if we focus at the hyperfocal length, we would have full depth of field from two feet to infinity, right? Again, the stuff can be a little, little overwhelming, but look what happens when we put on a hundred millimeter lens. The whole game changes. If we focus five feet away, our depth of field is only 0.69 feet, at, even at F16. So 0.69 feet is what, eight inches, something like that. So the hyperfocal length or the hyperfocal distance is way out at 68.7 feet. So to get infinity in focus, you have to focus way out at 68 feet away from you, right? It's what happens when you put on the, te the telephoto and that's a pretty short telephoto. Okay, so if we focus at five feet at F4 with a 100 millimeter lens, our depth of field is only 0.17 feet, not even two inches. Okay, and so if we wanted to look at that hyperfocal distance that we need to get full depth of field, it's way out at 273 feet. So you'd have to focus 273 feet away to get infinity in focus. Crazy, huh? Okay, so now when we, we pop that back out to 10 feet, uh, everything changes again, but our hyperfocal distance is still way out at 273, but we're now getting a whopping 0.71 feet of depth of field. So what I want you to get from this, not so much numbers, but how much all of the factors matter, the aperture, the lens, and the focal distance. Those three working together determine the, the depth of field. Now you don't need to pull out an app to calculate this every time, but if you wanna be precise, you can. I rarely do, I have to admit, there's another way or two that I use. Um, once in a while, I'll pull on an app, but for the most part, I, I'm, I don't. So most cameras have a depth of field preview button and it'll either be on the front or on the right, on the front left or front right, usually down low. And when you push that button, it will uh, essentially stop down your lens. So if you have your if you have your camera set at f16, say, when you look through it, if it's an f5.6 lens, you're seeing it. If f5.6 is the biggest opening you have, let's say, when you look through it, you're looking at f5.6. You're not looking at f16. When you push the depth of field preview button, it closes the the shutter down to f16. And so if you're shooting with a DSLR and you look through the viewfinder, it gets really dark when you do that, right? And if you let your eyes adjust, you can see, see it and you can see your depth, but it's pretty tough. But if you use live view on your camera and you hit your depth of field preview button, it will show you what it actually looks like, what your scene actually looks like uh, depth of field wise, okay? So then you can see what's in focus. So some mirrorless cameras will show you the depth of field all the time. Others have a depth of field preview button, uh, but the viewfinder doesn't get dark when you push it. So if you're looking through the camera and you hit the depth of field preview button on a mirrorless, it will adjust for the darkness and you can see full brightness and full depth of field. Pretty cool. One of the, one of the few reasons I like uh, my mirrorless camera. So, when you, like I say, when you look through the camera at live view and you have your depth of field preview button depressed, you see how much depth of field you're getting. And when you change what you're focusing on, you'll see your depth of field change. So obviously this one, I'm focused on the horse in the background. And now when I focus a little bit closer to me, actually a lot closer, I can see, uh, I can see the depth of field, how much of the picture is gonna be in focus, okay? Pretty cool. So if you don't wanna mess around with the math and the apps, then you can just use a general rule of focusing one third of the way into the scene. 
So twice as much of a scene will be in focus behind what you focus on as in front. So in this picture, I focused on the fence about right there. So in theory, if I want as much depth of field as possible, I'm gonna focus a third of the way into the scene and of course use F16. And if I want to maximize my depth of field, I'm gonna use a wide angle lens. So in this case, even though my subject is the buildings and the foliage in the back, I'm not focusing back there because then my fore foreground would go out of focus. I want it all. So I'm not focusing clear in the back of the scene, which is the natural place to focus because that's where your subject is. I'm gonna focus away from the subject because again, I'm using a wide angle lens. So in this case, my subject happens to be about a third of the distance of the scene. And, and remember, we're always talking about distance away from the camera towards infinity, towards the horizon, towards the end of the earth, right? Um, and so I didn't need to think a whole lot about this one where, where I should focus. I knew that they being about a third of the way away from me, I focus on them, I'm gonna get some in focus in front of them, but I'm gonna get twice as much in focus behind them. And so the situation, the background is gonna carry in focus. Um, okay, so, so for the hot air balloons, I don't know where I focused. And the reason being, I shot several photos really fast and just manually changed where I was focusing. So basically I was, uh, focusing close and farther away than farther away than farther away and farther away. One of them came out right, right? <laughs> That's the, the, the science and the, behind that, right? Okay. So for a, for a scene like this, when I really want to, you know, really want to make sure I have everything in focus, I really have to think a lot about it. And so I didn't pull out the app to calculate it. I just used my depth of field preview button and started my focus about a third of the way into the scene, which is not, uh, in this case, there really wasn't anything to, to lock my autofocus onto. So I was doing purely manual focus while using the depth of field preview and just looking through the camera and seeing wherein everything was in focus, right? And it's, uh, it's, it's quite frequent that I do a manual fine tuning of the focus to get exactly what I want to be in focus. Um, again, this situation, I planned on focusing one third of the way in the, into the photo. So, and, and I've had people get confused by what I mean by one third of the way. It doesn't mean up and down in the, in the scene, it's how far away from you uh, something is. So if that building was was 30 feet away, uh, I would have focused about 10 feet. So I get more in front of me or 15 feet. And then I get more in front than be, uh, more in focus behind it than in front. So again, I'm using that depth of field preview button and I'm looking at the camera, either through the viewfinder or the live view and seeing what's in focus while I'm shooting it. And if it's not quite right, I'll just adjust the focus a little bit and move it either back closer to me or, or farther away. So it's pretty simple if you don't overthink it. You just decide what you want to be in focus. You know, do I want to have everything in focus? Well, in this scene, I do. So I'm, I know I'm going to get my aperture up around F16 or, or so, F11, and then I'm going to focus about one third of the way into the scene. Don't have to break out the apps, don't have to calculate, just that's going to get me really close. Right, and there are times when, uh, to get the maximum depth of field, I'm not going to focus on the subject. I'm uh, in this case, I'm focused not on the woman, but about where the dog is. Okay, and in this kind of scene where somebody's moving, I don't have the luxury of shooting multiple shots because I wanted her about right there, because of the nice light and the shadow and the rim light on her hair. So another step or two, I, I lost my photo. So I needed to make sure I had that depth of field. And you know, a lot of times in a scene like this, I will set up my tripod and I will figure out where my depth of field is. Then I wait for somebody to walk into the scene. You know, I'll, I'll just wait them out. 
and people have been with me like you're you're still waiting for that shot yes i am so sometimes that works sometimes you have to move on and sometimes you don't need full depth of field you know the the cuban farmer i wanted to have him in focus but i didn't care that the mountains in the background were slightly out that's a good thing um i i, I want him to stand out i let the background go a little little bit out of focus but i wanted to have enough focus to, to have context and, and know where we are. So lots of times I want uh, very little focus depth, uh, very, you know, very shallow depth of field. And uh, for the fox, I didn't want to have those trees in focus because then people are looking at the trees. I don't want you looking at the trees. Uh, it's, it's, you know, composition and, and focus for me is all about mind control. I'm controlling where you're looking in the photo. I want you looking at the eyes of that fox. If I had the trees in focus in the front and the back, you'd be looking all over the place, right? <clears throat> Don't want that. So you have shallow depth aperture, low ap high aperture, but are you focusing on his eyes? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's shot with a 500 millimeter lens at f4. You remember but, uh, shutter boom. speed? Shutter speed uh, would have been ISO 100. So with sunlight on their face, probably about 250th of a second or so. Okay. Yeah. Rather neat composition, the three out of focus trees in front sort of breaks it into thirds. Yes, it does. And you notice he's off center too. So there are times when I have to make sure that I'm focused right on the subject and not messing up, not messing around with any previews or calculations. Uh, this is with a 100 millimeter macro lens at f 2.8, so I have very little depth of field. But to get all the water drops lined up to make sure they're all in focus, I needed them to be the same distance away from me, to be on the same plane. So if if I shot this at a little bit of an angle, I, you know, I wouldn't have the depth of field to carry. Uh, more than one water drop, say. So I wanted to make sure I got as many as possible in focus with uh, just by just by uh, doing the depth of field, uh, thinking about the plane that they're on, and and they're all shooting, they're all sitting at the same distance away from the camera. And there is the in between the extremes. So I wanted to make sure I had enough depth of field that both puffins were in focus. But I wanted the grass in the front out of focus and the background out of focus. So this was shot with a 400 millimeter lens with at f5.6. And so, uh, you know, normally I'm focusing right on the eye of a critter. Uh, but in this case, I needed to focus a little bit behind that first bird in order to have the depth of field that could carry through. And it wasn't very far behind because I didn't want to lose the depth. You know, I didn't want to lose focus on on the one in the front. But I wanted them both to be, and so uh, you know it's a it's a, a real real uh, tricky situation sometimes where you know I want the foreground out of focus, I want the background out of focus, but I want to have enough depth of field in that short little area of the two birds to to carry both of them. And you know again, you don't always have to focus on the subject. You know sometimes it may be behind them to get full depth of field. So. Uh, in this case, rather than focus on the sheep, I focused way back down the field a ways, knowing the depth of field would carry from the front all the way to infinity. And uh, given a choice, I'd rather have objects closer to me in focus and things farther away slightly out. Uh, this one would be, I think, very visually confusing if the foreground was out of focus and the background was in focus. So I want to make sure I, I, I usually, and I can always show you an example of the exception, but I usually want to have the foreground in focus and the background, if I ha can't carry it all, the background out of focus. Uh, this is a situation where if I wanted to, you know, if I couldn't get all of this in one shot, I might do it with focus stacking. Um, and again, focus stacking is you take um, multiple photos focused on different points in the scene. So in this might have focused on boards five feet away, then 10 feet away, then 15 feet away, then 
30 feet away and and then in Photoshop stack those photos together. And if you want the instructions on how to do that, it's a pretty simple process. Drop me an email. Don't put it in the chat since I'm not looking at the chat. Uh, send me an email to Lauren at Lauren Photos and I'll give you that email address again. And I'll, I'll email you the the step by step, fairly simple way to do focus stacking. So you're on tripod on that one. I'm on a tripod with everything I shoot. <laughs> you, oh, okay. you, you, uh, you're rarely going to see a photo of mine that's not shot on a tripod. That's a, oh, a whole nother story. <laughs> so can you get full depth of field when shooting at large apertures like f5.6 or f4? Yes, you can if what you're focusing on is near infinity. So this was shot with a 400 millimeter lens focused at infinity. I'm on the other side of a, a glacier lagoon in Iceland and it's pretty far away. And so I didn't, didn't need to have anything in front of this uh, ice flow in focus. I wanted it and everything behind it in focus. And since I'm focusing at infinity, didn't matter what aperture I'm using, just doesn't matter because I'm focused at infinity, right? So everything is gonna be in focus. Well, I literally focused right on, on the uh, person in the front there. Infinity, everything's gonna be in focus. So that doesn't, that, not only with a wide angle lens, I do that with a, a telephoto, or a, I'm sorry, not only, that was with a telephoto lens, not only a telephoto, but with a wide angle also. And so infinity happens at a different point, depending on the, the lens you're using. So uh, a wide angle lens, infinity is much closer to you than with a telephoto lens. So, uh, uh, you know, a, a wide angle, it might be, 10 feet from 10 feet on is in focus at if you're at up at f16 uh, with a telephoto lens you might have to be 200 feet away or more maybe so it, it all depends on the lens and uh, again if everything in your shot is about the same distance away from you then you don't have to worry about what aperture you're using because you're going to have everything in focus you know, the doors and the wall are all on the same plane, essentially. So as long as I have six or eight inches of depth of field, I'm good, right? So uh, whatever is on that same plane is going to be in focus. And then, you know, some lenses, you know, we talked about where the infinity point is. Uh, this is shot with a, a super wide angle fisheye lens. And so at f11, anything past two feet is going to be in focus. So I can just focus at two feet away and I know that everything else in the world is going to be in focus. And I don't have to even think about how much depth of field I'm having or, or whatever, because I know that with that really wide angle lens, F11, everything's going to be in focus. And again, that's what your iPhone is doing. It's, it's, it's using a, a very wide angle lens. It has, uh, and it has a very small sensor, right? So those two combinations mean that pretty much everything's gonna be in focus. So uh, getting reflections in focus, full depth of field can be really tricky. So you can't just focus on the water and expect the top of the building to be in focus because it might be 30 feet farther away from you because you have to calculate or, or figure out that the reflection distance is not where the water is, it's how far away whatever's reflecting in the water shows. So if I was, uh, if I was just focusing right on the water itself, the building might be out of focus. If I focused on the building reflection, like the top of the building reflection, the water might be out of focus. So I have to use the right combination of aperture and lens and subject distance to make sure it's all in focus. And uh, that, you know, that, can be, that can be pretty tricky sometimes and frustrating if you're not, you know, not clicking, wait a minute, I need to, need to uh, adjust that. 
And so, you know, I, I always say practice is what makes us uh, better. And th the key for me is always shooting as much as you can. And uh, I, I know a lot of photographers don't think about having to practice, but we do. You know, if, if you played a musical instrument, you don't just pick it up and start playing songs. You, you do some, some exercises. And so a, a really good exercise to do is uh, several times a week, two or three or however many you can, just line some things up on your kitchen table or any place, uh, some glasses or some bottles or whatever, and then photograph them with different lenses and then with different apertures and, and move your camera a different distance away from, from them and just see what happens. You know, if you have them lined up in a line going away from you, you know, focus on the one in the front. You know, if you, if you put five glasses down in a straight line straight away from you and you focus on the first one uh, and you're only five feet away from that first one, I can almost guarantee you the, the last one will be out of focus. Now, if you focus on the second one, the last one will become a little bit more in focus. Focus on the third one and, and possibly that last one, depending on how far away you put the glasses from each other, will be in focus. But now the one in the front is starting to get out of focus. Focus on the fourth one, the one in the front is going to be probably totally out of focus. The second yes. one will be getting a little soft and then farther away is going to be more in focus. So if you do that and several times, you, you learn what's what's uh what's working and what's not and and you know your camera only does three things you know it, it it has the lens which has the aperture it has the shutter speed um and uh, iso right and uh the, your focal length of your lens so between shutter speed aperture and the focal length of your lens whether you're using telephoto or wide angle or you're in between you know those three things there's only 18 combinations that you can shoot with. Now there's in between those, but but uh, uh, I've calculated that the 18 different ways you can shoot something, and I have a list. If you want that list, just drop me an email, and I'll I'll send that to you too. But, uh, um, you know, it, there's only a few ways that you can technically shoot any situation. Once you master those situations, no matter what you're photographing then it becomes a non-technical thing. It becomes a creative thing. You know, what angle are you shooting at? What time of day are you shooting? How's the light? Where's the light? You know, that kind of thing. Uh, taking people, you know, the right moment, uh, expression, you know, interaction, reaction, all of that. But the camera, you know, we, we have these cameras that have 10,000 things in the menus. Well, everything in the menu is going right back to focus, uh, aperture or shutter speed. Uh, th that's all they do. Now they've added a computer to it to do post processing, but there's nothing that you can do in the camera with post processing that you, you can't do better in Lightroom. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it does make it easier. But you know everything, all those menu items. Uh, you know if you threw them all away, you'd end up with uh, a, a digital, uh, you know, antique box camera. And uh, you know that's that's the essence of, of photography on the technical side. The creative side is a whole different story. But you know, there's only 18 ways to shoot something. I, I figured out. Okay, so uh, if if you want uh, the list of 18 ways or the focus stacking, send me an email to Lauren at laurenphotos.com, and I will send that out to you. Uh, any questions on any of this? And again, I'm really sorry for the the Zoom problems here tonight. And last time, Lauren, what what about focusing for stars and the moon? Really simple. They're at infinity, <laughs> so that's why. So when when I do uh, astrophotography, I shoot everything at f two point eight, and and with a wide angle lens for other reasons also, but with a wide angle lens at at f you know. With a wide angle lens, if I'm shooting, I'm shooting with a 14 or a 16 millimeter lens, a super wide angle, everything from eight feet to infinities in focus, uh, almost no matter what aperture you're using. So, so the stars are all, you know, it's infinity. So you don't have to, that's why you don't have to worry about focusing on one star against another one, even though the other one's 
you know, million miles farther away. Uh, they're all in infinity, so makes it easy. Lauren, what about lenses that will go rack past infinity? Yeah, so most lenses will, you can focus past infinity, which just doesn't make any sense, but it's just a, a technical or a physics thing of, of lens building. So on most lenses, there's a marking that shows you where infinity is. Uh, some of the newer uh, digital lenses don't show you that, and you can't you can't focus past that. But um, but you you can manually focus a lens past infinity, which means you're throwing everything out of focus. So if you're just trying to find infinity, you don't want to just turn the lens as far as you can, whichever direction Nikon and Canon and Nikon goes the opposite direction of everybody else. They did it to be different, and it worked. Uh, so when you're when you're twisting your lens to focus, you don't want to go all the way to infinity. You need to come back just a little bit. Well, oh, I didn't know there was such a thing as focusing past infinity. In my experience, yeah. infinity is the end of the travel. You would think, but it's not. Seems on, like only on a most digital lenses. thing. Yeah, most lenses it's not. But I also, but what you can do is just focus on a, a tree on the other side of the field or, or a building far away, and that's going to be infinity. You know, if you focus on something or focus on, uh, you know, anything far away, and then you look at your lens, if, if it shows you where, if it has the infinity marking on the lens, you'll see that it didn't go all the way uh, as far as it could. It stopped about where that, that little hash mark is on your lens. Other questions? Uh, yeah, Lauren, a quick question. Yes. Uh, just like you have the ability to take multiple shots, that it's built into the camera, it takes five, 10 quick succession, right, automatically. And each one is at a different exposure. Similarly, is it possible for the camera to take multiple shots at different focal distances so that you don't have to do manually? Yes, some cameras do that. I don't have one that does, but some cameras uh, will will do focus stacking for you automatically. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. you need to look up whether that's feasible with your camera. Uh, uh -huh. And if you're buying a new one that's important to you, it might be a feature you want to get. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And some of them will do the processing right in the camera also. So you'll you'll shoot. 10 photos maybe and boom, uh, one comes out that's totally in focus, which is pretty insane. <laughs> Thanks. Sure. Yes, there's an optimum uh, focal length for most lenses. Sometimes it's around F11 or F8, if, but you will go down to F16 to increase the depth of field sometimes, is that correct? So, yeah, absolutely. So most lenses at their smallest aperture, so if you have F22 or F32, whatever the biggest number, smallest aperture, that's the least sharp uh, point on a lens. And also most lenses, two stops open from wide open is the sharpest. So if you have a 2.8 lens, uh, uh, five, six, would be might be the sharpest. Now, there are plenty of people out there on the internet that will show you uh, things they've done with microscopes and and all these test gears that you know, like well, it's it's well one point eight one three percent smaller here than you know worse here than I, and and where usually shows up is in the corners of your picture. So my suggestion is take your lens out, shoot something at F8, shoot something at F16, shoot something, uh, the same thing at F32, take it into your computer, blow it up to 100% and see if it's sharp. If it's sharp, doesn't matter. Now, you might be able to put the you know, analyzer on it and it'll tell you, well, it's not quite as sharp, but if it looks good, doesn't matter, right? I don't care what the analyzer says. I just want to know what it looks like. So, uh, 
yeah, definitely every lens is, has a sweet spot, but it, and and every lens has a, the least sharp place. But if it's acceptably sharp, then it doesn't matter, and it and it depends on what's not sharp for you too. So a less expensive lens will will frequently be out of more out of focus in the corners than in the middle. Yeah, Lauren, someone said um, in another group that I'm a member of that uh, you should always try not to um, crop your images when you compose them so tightly so that you have room to uh, crop and post. And that would probably take care of the uh, soft edges, correct? Yeah, <laughs> but you're throwing away data. So if you have a 20 megapixel file and you're cropping off 10% of it, you're or 15%, you're you know you're chopping your file size way down, and and depending what you're doing with the photo, if you're trying to make a big print, you're going to be in trouble. If you're putting it on Instagram, it won't be a problem. So uh, again, it's a, a test test your lenses and see. Um, my favorite thing to do as soon as I get a new lens is I find a brick wall and. A, put the camera on a tripod and I make sure I'm shooting perpendicular into that brick wall and I run through uh, every every aperture you know if it's a f4 f5 6 8 11 16 22 32 whatever the whatever the even numbers are going up and then I put them in the computer and see what it looks like and if it's getting soft on the corners at, at f32 then I know I'm not shooting at f32 unless you know something freezes over and I need to. The same thing if it's wide open, if it's not sharp but wide open, I'm sending that lens back. But, uh, you know, photographing a brick wall is great because you have that pattern and you can tell when something's out of focus uh, on the sides. That if it's in focus in the middle and it's out of focus on both sides, as long as you're shooting perpendicular into it, so, you know, you're shooting the same plane, uh, then it's, it's you know, a, a great test. So I highly recommend doing that or anything with a pattern in it you know you don't want to photograph a plain white wall because you can't see it but anything with a pattern will will work okay this was very uh very nice presentation lauren thank you very much yeah. thank you so thank again, you lauren. lauren yeah very nice thank, thank, you, thank you very much thank lauren. You. great class thank you. lauren thank, thank you, you very much. Much. thank you so much everybody awesome.